receiver. I was a slot receiver weighing about 198, <clears throat> six foot. I could run a, a solid 448. This is this is the time that we say goodbye to the the man, the myth, the, the quickest guy in the league. Love Luck. It. The man is behind the camera right now. <laughs> Can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing. I don't need no help, I don't need opinions, so don't waste my time. Then I just been right, living yeah. online. My city don't show me no love, and that's fine. Fuck local radio stations, I got more plays than all of these rappers combined. I'm going, I'm going again. I've been going in, I'm fed up with so many things. I gotta just let it all out. I'm talking about the shit they've been talking about. Telling me I should do this, telling me I should do that. Telling me, telling me things about rap. Talking the truth and that stab in my back, they will knock me off track. No, no. Too many things have been building, been hard to deal with. I just been drinking. Remember my moves in the past, I'm wondering what was I thinking Lately I'm living in fear, wondering what if the end is so near All of this shit going on, the shootings are strong One shot to the head and I'm gone, I'm losing control but I can't let it go Cause I'm trying to get more and I've been in the moment I've been in the zone and I'm moving alone I don't pick up the phone when my family call up and do Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up Now, um, we can't forget about the gym part Roll clip please, let's ride Where most of the people are so close minded They go into school and they work in a job But they don't even like it I won't be put in a box Nobody telling me what I should rock Nobody telling me what I should drop Cause I do what I want and just know I don't stop Recording till 4 in the morning They snoring, I'm pouring my soul into every story I'm writing, producing, I mix it, I master I'm building my craft and I'm not looking back I've been going doing things I want to do when I want to Everybody want to get away but they not do Everybody want to copy you but they not you Everybody want to be cool but they not new Whoa, look how I go Gonna be a dentist, I still got the flow Never gonna lose cause I'm still doing both Never go lose because I've been on the road. Come to your so for those of you who have no clue who I am, my name is Brennan Myers, and this is actually my backyard. Exactly where it started for me here on YouTube. And now I have 740,000 subscribers plus. I don't even know. And, and this is the pull-up bar. This is the pull-up bar that I built after I stopped playing Division I football at Florida Atlantic University. Now, my story, pretty unique. I was always the hardest working kid. I had a lot to overcome. I was always being challenged. Someone always said, hey, you're not good enough. Someone always said, hey, you're not big enough. Hey, someone always said, you're not fast enough, or this or that. And every single time I worked on my craft, every single time someone said, you don't have the nicest hands, worked on that craft, I became the best with my hands. Every single time someone told me, hey, you're not the fastest, I became the fastest. Every single time someone told me, hey, you don't work the hardest, I worked the hardest and I overcame that. And every single year after that, I became better and better and better. And when I went to Florida Atlantic University, it was actually out of uh, something that I, I didn't really want. I'm just going to be honest. I live 20 minutes away from that school. Uh, it's a smaller Division I school. It's not as big as Vanderbilt or, or an SEC school or not even a Big Ten or nothing compared to even Rutgers or anything big in that sense. And when I was told that, hey, you're no longer going to be going to Vanderbilt, you don't have an opportunity to go to Vanderbilt anymore, um, I had to walk on at FAU and it was pretty heart-wrenching for me. I wanted to get out of here. I wanted to get out of Florida. There was many, many reasons why. Now, I grew up with acne all over my face. I grew up with uh, being the most athletic kid and the most hardworking because I was so self-conscious and I was insecure about who I was and my body and I always wanted to prove other people wrong. I wanted to be the most popular kid because everyone around me were the most popular kids and I was kind of like the low hanging fruit. I was, I was on the tree, I was on the tree of popularity but I was always the lowest and people knew who I was but they didn't really get me or, or why I was there, right? So my goal was to get all the chicks to make the most money in the end, play in the NFL and prove everyone wrong, just be the most popular be someone that everyone knew worked the hardest no matter what. Now, when I went to college, uh, I thought I was going to Vanderbilt, as I said, I had a concussion, coaching staff changed, uh, they called me up and said, hey, uh, you're not on our list of recruiting, signing day is right around the corner, and so I had to walk on at FAU. And when I got to the practice field, uh, that first day I earned my respect. I was red shirting the whole year, so I was on the practice squad, and I worked my butt off. 
every single play, I was like, no, 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 I got this. I, I want to be in. I want to be in. Slot receiver. I was a slot receiver weighing about 198, <clears throat> six foot. I could run a, a solid 448. I would, I would say 449, 448. Uh, my vert, 39 inches. Um, pretty strong, pretty powerful, pretty quick. But what made me stop playing football? What made me quit, hang up the cleats to go to YouTube? Well, that full year, I earned my respect. I showed that I was the hardest working. The coaching staff just saw me just every single day, giving it all, giving it all I had. I got concussions. I had cracked my sternum. I tore this muscle and I tore that and I pulled my hamstring. I did that because I was working so hard to overcome everybody. And I earned my respect from all of the starters, the linebackers, the safeties, especially who hit me time and time again in practice when I showed them the good or the great from other teams, what they could provide during all the shadowing, what they were preparing for each and every week. And so the new coaching staff rolled in the next year and I thought I was going to play that first year. Honestly, we were doing really, really bad and uh, I was performing, but I guess not. I was redshirting the full year. They didn't really get to see me on the playing field. So that next year rolls around and I have an opportunity to really play, to start. My, my soft, my, actually my redshirt freshman year. Spring comes around and I'm working back and forth. You know, new coaches staff, new wide receivers coach, crazy. I'm talking about, I have some stories that are just insane. You know, rolling eight, 1,800 yards, wanting to throw up and having to run and sprint to my class to make sure I get in there before I have to roll another 500 yards. It's pretty intense, very intense. And like I said, I put in the work every single day. This is my dream. To go to the NFL was my dream. That's all I ever concentrated on. And as I was learning the playbook during spring, you know, I was first on the depth chart and then hit my coach would drop me to fourth. And then I was, I was second on the depth chart and my coach would drop me to, to seventh. And then I was first on the depth chart and my coach would drop me to second. He would bring me back up to first. And right before my spring game, I had a little injury, very, very slight, I, I believe it was a concussion. And uh, I went into the spring game on the second team. Okay, it is what it is, it's spring. And I performed, I made it happen. I caught a couple of passes, made my blocks, was always open, was always showing that I could give everything I had and make it happen. I just, I performed. And so at that time I was kind of getting tired of the game. I was falling out of love with it because I could see what it does to people. I've trained with Anquan Bolden. I've trained with Eric Berry. I've trained with Jacoby Ford. I've trained with XPE Sports, with all the professionals. I've, I've trained with this strength and conditioning coach, that strength and conditioning coach. I've been through a lot in my career and who I've trained with and I've seen what the NFL provides. And as I was playing, I was kind of losing my faith in football. I felt like I'm giving all I got, but for what? I'm giving all I got for popularity. I'm giving all I got for people just to see who I am and how hard I work. The coaching staff knew who I was. You know, my, my receivers coach praised about me because I was that guy that would work his butt off and I was quick and I was powerful, I was athletic and I could make things happen. And as I trained over the summer, I gave it all I had again. Every single step, I was like, ah, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start this year. I'm gonna start this year. As a walk on, I'm gonna start this year. And my coach sat me down that summer and he said, hey, you do have the opportunity. You just gotta work your butt off. You could be a star. You just gotta work your butt off. That, that's what it takes. If you wanna go to the NFL, that's what it takes. And so going into that sophomore year, getting all of our stuff, training camps around, you know, training camp is intense, intense. And the training that we had to do for it was, even more intense. So we're sitting there, we're ready to go, and uh, you know, I, I walk into the, to the coaching staff's room, and I'm third or fourth on the depth chart. I'm like, what? I was just, I just came out of spring number one, because I was on number twos, and I had a, a great performance, and I was number one. And I was so confused, and I was already falling out of love with the game, and I, I was like, man, do I even want to play? Like, this just doesn't even make any sense. But me, a never give up attitude. I'm always gonna pursue, I'm always gonna keep on going. I got this tatted on my arm because it's all good. It always is all good. And so when that opportunity arised to go into training camp, I worked my butt off. You know, my, my high school coaches came and saw me perform and I, I was getting better. I was getting so much better. My performance was to a next level. And so as I was going through training camp, you know, people were falling out, like going getting IVs, they're going to the hospital because he's just working us to death. 
he's killing us, but I'm still going, I'm grinding every single day, but yet I feel more tired than I ever have. I feel more tired, I'm exhausted. And I'm telling myself, do you really love this game? Is this something that you truly wanna do? And I can remember just two years ago, sitting down with my buddy, watching YouTube videos and seeing uh, all these guys do crazy tricks on pull-up bars and all these different things, and I'm like, no, maybe, maybe that's something that I wanna do. Maybe that's something I wanna do, but I'm like, no, 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 I need to go to the NFL. This is what my passion is, this is what I need to do. Long story short, walked into my coach's office two weeks before the first game or a week and a half before the first game, and I say, hey coach, um, I no longer wanna play here. I no longer wanna play football at all. And he said, turn around. He didn't even mention anything else, he said, turn around. I look at the whiteboard and it says, Brennan Myers, starting, slot receiver, <laughs> starting, I'm starting, okay? I'm going into the season starting. First game, I believe, was Florida, UF, University of Florida, the Gators. Super excited, but yet I knew I had to go. And I said, coach, I appreciate it, but you know, I've put all I've had, and I've been trying to overcome all these different things and prove people wrong, and I haven't done anything for myself. And I feel like football is just not for me anymore. So. So I quit and then I go ahead and I start emailing every coach in the country. I don't know why I felt like I was, I was lost. I didn't know what to do. I got a scholarship to North Carolina a and Division One AA. I go up there for two weeks. I go into the coach's off, office and I say, I don't want to play. I don't want to sign. I'm out of here. I drive 12 hours back, 12 hours back home at 8 p.m. I arrive at 8 a.m. the next morning exhausted. I tell my dad, I'm like, I don't want to play anymore. I don't want to play football anymore. So I start YouTube. I start making videos. And I, I bring all my passion to this and, and it kind of was transforming. I was given everything I had. I started learning graphic design. I started learning everything. And then I felt this itch to play football again. And it made no sense to me. New coaching staff at FAU again. So I go down there for a tryout. Halfway through, Halfway through the tryout, the coaches already knows me. All of the coaches know me already. They knew I was gonna be playing and, and they were gonna bring me in, but I just, I tapped out. And I said, I don't love this anymore. Although I, I've been training so hard and so long for it, I don't love this anymore and I don't wanna play. And that was when my career ended. And ever since, for the past five, four or five years, I have given it my all on social media, on YouTube, and I found a new passion. And through this, I started YouTube. I started filming every single day. Consistency is number one, most important thing. Creating that appearance and that, that performance and showing people how relatable you are. It's all the way at the top. The importance of giving it your all and showing your passion and describing everything you've been through and all of the heartaches and the risks you've taken and all the opportunities you decided to take are so important for people to overcome what they've been through. And now here I am. I have a big company. I live in a beautiful place. I'm moving. You know, I, I, I've, I've experienced love with, with a relationship. I've experienced uh, meeting multimillionaires, billionaires. I've sat down with some of the top professionals and talked with them. Some of the top professionals in the Hollywood scene, on TV, everywhere. And it's because I took the leap of faith and I said, hey, I don't care where I was. I want to be somewhere new. I want to give myself an opportunity in a different realm. And my coach, my receivers coach, when I quit back at FAU, he told me, you're gonna be successful no matter what. You're a superstar. You work harder than every, any other guy in this room. And you're gonna, you're gonna see that, hey, football isn't end all. Football is big, football is important, but that's not all you have in the tank. So that's when I started YouTube, and now here I am. I'm living the dream. So that's my story. That's how I went from playing Division I football all of the heartaches and things that I went through, concussions, injuries, pain. And now here I am on YouTube, social media, owning a company, living, traveling, doing the things that I want every single day. And it's because I took the leap of faith and I stopped doing what I didn't truly love. The NFL, it's great, but it's not for me. So that's my story. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll talk soon.